You are the best Dolmatis in all of Athens. Thank you. Thank you. Kalyi Oryxi. What did he say? Basically, it was Greek for Bon Appetit. What a warning, though. These are not the best Dolmatis in Athens, and I am the best on the block. But this cafe is right next to the pastry shop I used to take meal to every afternoon. I'm sure he'll show. Courtney, I don't think that grabbing him off the street is the best way to go. I mean, he's not going to know what's going on, and I don't want to traumatize him. What else can we do? We can't talk to the Canaleses. If they find out we're here, they'll go straight to the authorities. Right. I knew what the authorities going to believe, huh? One of the most influential families in Greece, or the two American tourists who got busted for smuggling. Exactly. We're not even in this country legally. Remember that. And we have to kidnap him. Courtney, it is our only option. I just hate to stoop to the Canaleses' level. Joe, there he is. No. Listen to me, those are his bodyguards, all right? Do not let them see. But Joe... Courtney, if he recognizes us, he is going to call out. The bodyguards will know we're here. They'll tell the Canaleses, and that will be the end of it for us. We're gonna get to Neil if he's being guarded. I don't know, but we will. Chris, we need your help. Was what? You haven't been able to break the code to your notes on DL 56. How'd you get my notes? You gave them to us. When? It's critical that we find out how to make DL 56 so we can start working on a vaccine. Karen destroyed her notes. You're the only one who knows how to make it. Chris, you have to tell us how to break the code to your notes. the others. Hypotensive with a low oxygen saturation. Fever and chills. Temperature 103. Did you get the blood test back? I did. And? Both you and Kevin have been exposed to the Nepalese flu within the last two months. But since Nepalese is a part of this new strain, the antibodies your body have already created has managed to slow it. Slow it? But not stop it? That's right. So, it's only a matter of time before I show symptoms, too. I'm afraid so. Chris, we were able to reconstruct about a quarter of the formula, but it'll take weeks to finish it, and we don't have that kind of time. See, I know what you're thinking, Chris. You've been working on this drug so you could patent it and make a fortune. But we're talking about lives. Mario is dead. Mario? Yes. And Frank went to cardiac arrest earlier today. And we were able to bring him back, but there are others who won't be so lucky. This is a very determined virus. It won't quit. Get my lab computer. Call up the formula. File. Highlight the text. I press F3 plus F6 plus F9. And then hit enter. <coughs> That'll decode it into English. Thank you, Chris. You did the right thing. Are you in pain? I'm probably going to die from a virus I created. I just gave away a fortune. Peachy. Well, I suppose you don't feel one ounce of remorse over Mario. Of course I do! I'm not to hurt anyone. Listen, I'll increase your oxygen. That should help with the discomfort. Thanks. 
It is so hard for me not to run up to him and, and throw my arms around him. I know, for me too. But he looked okay, didn't he? Yes, Courtney, he seemed fine. I'm, I'm sure the Canaleses are taking great care of him. I just wonder what they told him to explain why I'm not with him. Probably told him that you said it was okay for him to take this trip. But he has to be wondering why I haven't called. We've never been apart. He is my son. How dare those people just take him away from me. Listen to me. We cannot take any risks. Courtney, if we get arrested, the Greek officials will not be so nice the second time around. You said so yourself. You're right. They'd throw us in jail for sure. Oh, gosh, this whole trip has been so surreal, so different than the first time I came to Greece. Back then, I thought all my dreams were coming true. Your dreams of marrying a rich man? You wouldn't understand. Try me. You can't possibly know what it was like for me growing up. One of your parents didn't seem so bad. Oh, well, they never beat me or starved me or locked me in a closet, nothing like that. But from day one, they drilled into my head the importance of wealth and social standing. So is that why your father managed that snotty country club? Running that place was the closest he ever came to the right sort of people. But we never really belonged as much social climbing as my parents did, and they did a lot. We were always left out. I saw that side in your parents. But I always thought you were impervious to it when we were dating. I wasn't. I just didn't let you see it. That wouldn't be playing the game properly. Playing the game? I re remember in seventh grade, running home with my report card. I was so proud of myself. I made all A's. And my mother sat me down. And she explained to me that while it was important to be smart, it was even more important not to look too smart. Otherwise, I'd just chase all the boys away. Are you kidding me? Your mother told you this? Yeah. I was being trained to catch a rich man. So why were you dating me? Because I fell in love. Why, why didn't you tell me this when we were dating, Courtney? Oh, I was 19. I was embarrassed. I was confused. It's hard going against everything you've been taught. My parents are the ones who made me go to Europe. Where you met John Canellas. I thought I had uh, stepped right into this fairy tale. He was handsome. He was connected. He was rich. He was everything my mother told me I wanted. And now I lie awake at night and I wonder why I ever bought into such garbage. We all make mistakes. But you can't beat yourself up over it. Plus, look what you have. Neil is an amazing, amazing kid. And that doesn't just come out of nowhere. You are an incredible mother. Well, thank you for not blaming all of this on me. I know if I would have told you the truth about being Neil's father in the Listen beginning... Listen you know what? I don't want to dwell on the past. But what's important now is we find the simplest approach to getting our son back. Maybe you should call the Canelloses and just see if they'll let you talk to Neil. Okay. Do not let on that you're an athlete, right? I won't, I won't. Yasash? Oh, Amy, hi. It's, it's me, Courtney. Oh, Courtney. Uh, how are you? Actually, I'm really worried about Neil. May I speak to him? What are you talking about? Neil is not here. Yes, he is. Courtney, 
Do you mean to tell me you do not know where my grandson is? I do know he's with you. Mary Scanlon told me all about your visit, how she left Neil out playing with you and Costas, and when she returned, you had taken him. You stole my son. You stole my son, and he isn't even your grandson. I'm afraid Mary Scanlon is mistaken. As for you, my husband and I have accepted the fact that Neil is not our grandson. <laughs> There's no reason to take him. You don't understand. I heard from Neil's doctor. The results from his last checkup indicate that his leukemia has returned. He needs medical attention right away. I cannot help you. Neil is not here. Goodbye. <sighs> that bitch! She denied everything. Oh. Hey. Oh. Gee, you look almost well enough to go out karaoke club hopping with me. <laughs> you lie. I look awful. Well, you're, you're in good company. You look tired. Have you had any rest? No time. No time. I called Gail. Why? Because you asked me to. I did? You wanted Gail to check on Julie for you. If you say so, I... I don't remember telling you that. She said it wouldn't be a problem. I'll have Victor give her my case notes. Gail's a good friend. It's going to take a lot of work to undo the damage Greg Cooper did to Julie. Hey, listen to me. Don't you worry about that right now, all right? You need to concentrate on the number this virus is doing on you. It's all the same to you. I'd rather not think about that at all. Okay. Do you want me to change the subject and talk about something more pleasant? Yes, please. Okay. I would like to thank you for the lovely dinner. Pre-outbreak, of course. Thank you. I'm sorry it ended so abruptly. I was enjoying myself, too. That's a relief. A relief? Well, I thought that maybe you were using this super virus thing as a way to get out of a second date. Au contraire. Don't tell anyone, but I arranged this whole quarantine just to have an excuse to spend more time with you. It worked. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, is there anything I can do? Believe me, I wish there was. <laughs> okay, so what's next? Four milliliters of meansurin. Okay. Then it says we need to heat the mixture to a temperature of... Uh... Uh, 185 degrees. Yep. I remember. God, I hope this works. Well, it should. Chris's notes, they seem right. Well, they should. He probably stole them from you. I don't even want to think about that right now. I just want to concentrate on making this. Yeah, but will DL-56 give us the answers we need? It's the first step. You know, when I think about the friends that we've lost to the general homicide murders, the thought of losing any more to this flu. I know. When we were on break, I went and visited my dad. Oh, how's he doing? Well, he was asleep. I, I didn't want to wake him up. But I took a look at his chart, and his last temperature read was 102 degrees. Oh. I felt so helpless. No, I, I visited Ellen. Yeah. Didn't even recognize me. No idea at all who I was. All the schooling we've gone through. All our hard work. And an entire staff of a first-rate hospital and the ADC at our disposal. And some sub-microscopic piece of genetic blob with a protein coat has us completely stymied. Well, we just have to stay on course. Explore every avenue. We're going to find a vaccine. I know it. Finding a vaccine isn't going to help those who already have this. People aren't getting well. They just get a little bit better, and then they relapse. What we need to do is, is find something that's going to suppress the symptoms long enough so that their bodies will be able to overcome this virus. I can't believe she would lie to me like that. I mean, so transparently, she knows I know they have Neil. Maybe she thought that you had somebody else on the line, like a, an official or a police, that you were trying to convince that they had Neil. No, she wasn't trying to fool anyone. If she really thought Neil was missing, she would have hit the roof. Then she would have called the airport, had them gas up the plane for a flight back to the States. The only reason she told me they don't have Neil 
was to make me mad, and it worked. What you did was brilliant. I didn't do anything. No, you did. You told them that Neil needed medical attention. Yeah, just saying that gave me the release. Thank God it's not true. Yeah, but she doesn't know that. Well, I'm sure she can guess that I was lying. I'm sure she must be able to guess how all desperate we need I am. Is that kernel of doubt? I don't follow you, Joe. Okay, look, the Canelloses went through great extremes to get their grandson back. Not because they want something from him, but because they love him. They don't love him. They want to control him. That's not the point. Okay, the point is that they traveled halfway across the world to kidnap their grandson. Now, they know he almost died of leukemia. So even if they think you're lying, even if they think there's a 99% chance that you're not telling them the truth, they are not going to take that chance and gamble with Neil's life. You're right. You're right. They'll contact the doctor who treated him here and schedule an appointment exactly. for the own test. And I bet you know who that doctor is. Yes. Okay. So we know where they'll take him. Now, if we can figure out the appointment time, we'll know when. And that will give us a leg up on snatching the back. Matt, meet DL-56. Oh, oh, one tough compound to get a hold of. The ADC people will get a sample to their lab in Atlanta. We should do two experiments here, though. The first one, we'll mix this with irradiated Nepalese virus. And then we can create a vaccine. We should also do a mixture with the active virus and then check the growth rate. Maybe if we see how it mutates, we can get a clue to see how to slow this thing down. Well, one radiated and one active. Coming up. Great. Hey, you. Feeling better? I was earlier. But then... then the bus came back and ran over you again, huh? to see you on your feet. I think this thing is scared of me. <laughs> Deadly and smart, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm just glad when you made it, you didn't give it your sense of humor, too. You, you know, I never intended to hurt anyone. I know that. I know. You're greedy, but you're not malevolent. <laughs> Thanks. Boyfriend. Who? He's been the last six months. All gooey over. Over Scott Bowman. And I ask you about your boyfriend. And you say who? <laughs> you kill me. are full of sick people. Of course, I'm going to be worried. I know you. This is something, something different. Someone else. Someone else. So? So I pretended to be the Canellos' housekeeper. Alini made an appointment for Neil at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Perfect. All right, so let's get over to the doctor's office so I can check the layout of the building and the surrounding area, okay? All right, Joe. Yeah. Joe. I don't know how to thank you. If it weren't for you, if I was here all by myself, I don't know what I would have done. It's my son, too, Courtney. You know what I wish? What? That your son grows up to be just like his father. I don't know if you want him exactly like me. Have you forgot about my bad habits? I also hope he never makes a mistake as big as the one I made. Marrying John? 
Letting you go. Come on, let's go before it's late. I think we should check the growth rate of the DL-56 active virus mixture every three minutes, okay? Let's get some ADC support crew to help out. That's a good idea. Dr. Perry should be in here as well. He has more experience with this sort of thing. Perry? What? Your glove. This is Lisa McCree. Tomorrow, from Washington, a preview of the impeachment vote in Congress. Plus, should doctors be allowed to make house calls online tomorrow on Good Morning America?